Hi, my name is Noah Eisenberg, and I'm a film scholar at the New School, talking with you today at the Quad Cinema in Greenwich Village for Cohen Media Channel. The film I'm talking with you about today is a, a picture that was directed by Fritz Lang in 1943, written by Bertolt Brecht, produced by Arnold Pressburger, one of the most influential and important European-born producers working in Hollywood at the time. It's called Hangman Also Die, an anti-Nazi film, one of a few uh, films that were made in, in the wake of the murder of, of the Reich's protectorate in Czechoslovakia, Reinhard Heydrich. Lang was very, very keen to collaborate with Brecht on this picture and to make a film that would galvanize the support for the anti-Nazi effort and, and the Allied war su uh, support more broadly. Brecht's work in, in Hollywood was, was generally an unhappy affair, and Hangman Also Die was, was no exception. Like Lang, he really wanted to uh, lend his support to the anti-Nazi uh, war effort here, and yet he felt that, that, that the film, uh, in, 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 in its final incarnation, was nowhere near as radical as he would have liked. The film, however, does, does uh, uh, advance that the, the, the anti-Nazi uh, war effort here. And Lang himself, earlier on, uh, years prior, was a member of the Hollywood Anti-Nazi League. And this film is very much in keeping with his political uh, allegiances there. They are also collaborating on this picture with the composer Hans Eisler. Eisler provides a stirring score, breathing life into the motto no Surrender, which was one of the working titles for the picture as well. This is the anthem that is sung in the final moments of the, of the scene. Minutes that have been kept from previous releases of this film, a very important scene in which you see the townspeople going to pay their respects to all the people who have sacrificed their lives in fighting against the Hitler regime. The stirring score that Hans Eisler composed for Hangmen Also Die unsurprisingly picked up a nomination for Academy Award. On this film, too, are a number of European-born actors who ended up in Hollywood having fled the Nazi regime, but here playing Nazis. In the first instance, we have Hans Heinrich von Twardowski, an actor who'd begun in the Weimar years playing uh, in, in the cabin of Dr. Caligari in Robert Wiener's film of 1920. Twardowski had fled the Nazi regime. He was homosexual, he was out as, as, as gay, and he was forced to flee uh, on the basis of his sexual orientation. In Hollywood, he ended up playing a number of Nazis. In Hangman Also Die, Hans Heinrich von Twardowski plays Reinhard Heydrich, the Reich's protector for Czechoslovakia. And in that early scene in which we first see him, he struts into the room with an almost sadistic air. The way that he holds that riding crop, for instance, and the way that he drops it in front of one of the Czech officials who's made to bend over obsequiously and pick it up from the floor. This is something that Twardowski seems to almost relish in his performance. Another European-born actor who found his way to Hollywood escaping the Nazis is Alexander Granach. Alexander Granach, as some of you know, played Renfield, the devious and shady real estate agent in F.W. Murnau's Nosferatu, the Dracula film from 1923. Playing Alois Gruber, the Gestapo uh, agent in the film, Granach is shown on screen as a kind of slovenly uh, uh, character. He drinks with reckless abandon. He cavorts with, with, with women. He's uh, a, a figure of, of, of endless debauchery, it seems. And Grana, who was a crossover from the Yiddish stage and who was made to flee the Nazis on the basis of his religion, in this picture plays up the, the, the odious nature of the Gestapo agent. Another character we see uh, on screen is the character actor Gene Lockhart, uh, who, whom we'd seen in, in, in Douglas Sirk's A Scandal in Paris. Here, too, he plays another uh, devious figure, a double crosser. He's a, uh, a double agent in this case, working for the Nazis, but pretending as though he is a member of the Czech underground. And hangmen also die. The camera work by James Wong Howe is also rather striking, in particular, in a scene in which we have the 
elderly Czech merchant, this older woman being interrogated by the sadistic Nazi official, the lighting in that scene, the menacing shadows conjured up in that scene, really help to give the film the anti-Nazi flavor that undoubtedly Lang and even Bertolt Brecht were aspiring to achieve with the picture. It's, it's a remarkable film and remarkable especially in the context of Hollywood's anti-Nazi films. I hope you enjoy the show.